welcome back to Mariana Math Books. My name is Mariana and today I am here with the Tarot Extreme Style which is a VR to Marlene Teresa. So this tag does not want to be filmed by me. I have been trying to film this tag since days ago and something always happens that I can't film. So, you know, I love doing long intros and I love talking a lot in my videos and I do love that, but I am not going to do that today because I have like 30 minutes to film and I've been wanting to film since forever this tag. So I'm just going to do it. So you know what this tag is. If you don't, you will catch on as I go along with the video. So no more intro, go. The first category for this tag is the Minimalist versus Maximalist deck. And I tried very hard to only concentrate on tarot, but I'm going to show you two oracles. And this is one of them. And when I show you, you will see why, um, why I had to choose it for this category. So the Minimalist deck is the minimalist oracle i mean i just had to include it in this category right and the minimalist oracle is as it says a minimalist oracle it just has the white card and it has a symbol and it has a word and I love it. Look, look, look at this card. Blank canvas. I mean, it doesn't get more minimal than that. And so, um, yeah, so it just has the word and it just has a, a very abstract um, <clears throat> symbol. And I just love it because uh, some I, I haven't seen a lot of talk about it, but I've seen one video where they just say basically they're just like paint blobs and they they are they are paint blobs but they are not just paint blobs like this is literally the re the the most synthetic representation of the concept like destiny i mean i mean it's totally a representation of the concept so this is the minimalist oracle and this is my minimalist deck and then for the maximalist deck i have the tarot of the four elements by isha Lerner. is the lighting okay i i'm not going to film this again okay i'm just we're just going to go with it so hopefully the lighting and everything is okay. Um, yeah, okay, we're just going to go with it. <laughs> so as you can see from the backs, just the backs alone are very maximalist and it has the four elements. I am not a fan of these backs, but I really love this deck, which is actually, this is a deck where it's not my aesthetic but i love it anyway and um and it's very good uh it works very good it reads very good for me and i use it for a very specific purpose and um i just really love it for that and so this is the maximalist deck i mean you can totally compare and i mean there is no doubt so uh you have a very busy image and then you have a very busy border, which the borders are a bit cheesy, but I, I love them for that. Um, and you have the border here. And when they are minor arcana, let me see if I can find one. So when you have minor arcana, the borders will show the element. So this is the earth element. And then this is, for example, the fire board. So if you want... Um, a, because this is a very like the purpose of this tag is to compare and i love it so i'm just going to start comparing i'm not going to st show them individually um so you can see this is a minimalist oracle see forgiveness and um death okay <laughs> i i love that combination um you have for example gratitude
and the king of air see th these are um these are the the borders for the air suit which i tell you are cheesy but i love them for it and i love that the cords are more like they seem like deities like gods right this is more like the god of air um and yeah so one more the magician and the inner child so i i i actually um i i think i think this deck goes with anything <laughs> so you know this will go with anything i put it next to so this is my minimalist oracle for the minimalist category and my tarot all of the four elements for the maximalist category then we have the daytime versus nighttime category and um this is the other oracle that i have for you and the rest are tarot <laughs> So I don't have like a daytime, nighttime practice. When I can, I pull cards in the when I can, I pull cards in the morning, and when I can, I pull cards in the evening. And so I don't really have like daytime, nighttime decks as practice. But I wanted to show you like the decks that give me daytime or nighttime vibes. And for the daytime, I mean with these bags does it get any more daytime than, than this i mean you can't so this is the radiant tarot and it's the radiant tarot pathway to creativity i always say the full name because i know there's a radiant wise and stuff and if you google um that's what will come up first so it's radiant tarot pathway to creativity And so it's like a colored pencil, um, really ch childish in the best way type of drawings, very colorful. Um, I'm sorry. So you can see it's it feels very daytime. It's very colorful. It's very vibrant. The um the 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 drawings are very like yeah childish in the best way so oh here i skipped i love this ten of wands so i'm going to leave it in the ten of wands because it's very daytime and for the nighttime i have the modern mary oracle because this just feels like nighttime prayer and I didn't show you the bags because the bags are not day, uh, nighttime. See, the bags are very daytime and I don't know why she chose these bags because they don't go with the front at all. Um, no in terms of vibe, no in terms of aesthetic. So, you know, I don't like the bags, but whatever. So, um, this just feels nighttime prayer and it's a new deck in my collection and that's how I've been using it uh, at night. It just feels comforting at night so i'm going to just put some cards look at this look at this combination i, I love this um so yeah this is the modern mary oracle i'm just in love with this deck it's one of those decks where it's like instant love the minute i saw it in etsy i loved it and then when i received it it's even more beautiful in person and it's just instant love peace i mean it's just like nighttime comfort so these are the modern mary and the radiant tarot let's just put some more uh, cards The fool and make a wish. I love when in flip throughs um, you have nice nice pairings. Warrior princess and the page of swords. Six of wands. So you get the idea. This is my daytime and nighttime deck. 
Then we have the best shuffle and the worst shuffle. And I have told you guys a million times. So you know this, you're probably sick of hearing it, but because of my neurological um, problems, I have mobility issues. And uh, so I can't riffle shuffle. Like I couldn't, even if someone was pointing a gun at my head, you know, like that, that level of I can't. Um, so I can't riffle shuffle and I can somewhat overhand, but it's not really, I mean, I mostly cut the deck when I overhand. It's not really like a true shuffle. So for shuffling, what I do is I deal the cards and I put them in piles. So I put them in, in five, four or five piles and I deal them and then I kind of like cut overhand. Um, and so for me, the best shuffle are cards that I can deal. And those are cards that sleep but are, that are not too slippery, but that are also slippery because, um, so the best cards are shiny cards or cards that have a bit of a sheen to them because mad cards stick together and they are super hard to deal. I know mad cards are very popular because people like to take pictures or whatever, but I hate I love the feel of them, but they are very hard to shuffle and some mad cards are better than others and this is a case where it's the worst. So the best shuffle I chose, the um, Tarot of the Hidden Realms. I just feel like in general Llewellyn, Llewellyn decks that are these ones with this these ones with this cardstock, like this shiny thin cardstock, um, are very good to shuffle. And um, Los Carabeo decks, the talk box decks, are also very uh, easy to shuffle. So I could have shown, I have several, but I didn't want to repeat decks in this tag. So I, um, I went with this one because I think that is very a very easy um, for for me to to deal and to slide, and then the worst shuffle is the Everyday Tarot by BD Tarot, which is actually my first tarot deck. I think I'm going to do the All About Tarot tag by um, Simon at the Hermit's Cave, and I'm going to show because this is my first deck. So if you can see they go in clumps they don't look they, they go in clumps and it's so hard and sometimes you'll get two stuck together and i have to unstick them and it's so hard for me to do and this is a really really good deck like this is a very good practical everyday type of deck like the name indicates but because i can't deal it I never use it and it's a shame because it's a very, very good deck. So this is my best shuffle and my worst shuffle. Then we have the overrated and underrated. And let me just say, I love how these bags look together and they are so contrasting and I love it because this is the purpose of this tag. So for the overrated, I chose the Light Sears Tarot. And I have so much to say about the Light Sears, but I don't have time. I don't have time to say everything that I want to say. So I'm just going to have to edit my thoughts. See, this is supposed to be a deck of like real people or something. I don't know, I guess this is the concept. I think this is maybe a context kind of thing. So because, you know, I'm from Mexico. So I'm looking at this from the perspective of someone from Latin America who lives in Latin America. And to me, this is a deck of American people who come to live to like exotic, quote unquote, exotic Latin American 
islands or or like in Tulum in Mexico like be, like this guy is an American retired person <laughs> that moved to Mexico or Guatemala or wherever and they move to towns that are supposed to be like exotic but that actually become very Americanized and that they are like the Instagram version of Latin America and um, that's just what I see when I see this deck and so um, it doesn't connect with me because I just see like people that take selfies for Instagram and then for my underrated deck I chose the Gift of Life Tarot which is a photography tarot that I actually don't use as a tarot like for reading but if you've seen my um, my everyday practice tarot um, video you know that I don't always use cards for reading them and so this is just an amazing deck I, I don't use it for reading but this is a great deck and if you want real people these are actual real people and this is actually why I don't use it as a tarot because it's too real it's too real and I feel uncomfortable doing a reading about my life while watching like um people in in poverty and and stuff so it's more a deck for like reflection and um yeah but this is just like i don't see a lot of people talking about it and it is an amazing amazing photography deck and um i wanted to show you like you see this one i feel like this is the real version of the fake version of the king of wands in the <laughs> light series tarot and i'm sorry if i'm sounding rude i don't mean to insult anyone i I don't know if I should have said what I said about the light years because I don't mean to be rude or judgmental but this is just like my perspective as someone who is not from the US so I'm just going to leave it at that so this is my overrated and underrated um, decks then we have the um, confronting and the comforting and I'm going to do something very obnoxious with this category so I apologize in advance but my confronting deck is the John Bauer Tarot and my comforting deck is the John Bauer Tarot and I promise you this is not just to be annoying I just I genuinely when I thought of com confronting decks this is the first deck that came to mind and when i thought of comforting decks this is the first deck that came to mind um i wanted to show a different type of confronting deck because usually people show like creepy or like violent or like um dark images and for me confronting is a um, more like a uh, I, I am a very mind person and so connecting to my heart <laughs> I'm a very swords person and so being cops is difficult to explain it in tarot terms and decks like these really um, get in touch with my emotions and with my inner child and like and and that's very uncomfortable to me and so this deck is like the deck that most makes me cry if you saw my good mood decks you probably know this uh, because it connects me to my emotions and because that because of that oh i'm going to i'm going to flip through it right so because it connects me to my emotions and to my inner child it is very uh confronting but it is also very comforting so if you saw my good mood decks, you know that I said that some decks are good mood because they put me in a good mood after having first made me cry. And this is the main deck that I think about it. And so if um this deck is like, I recently read the Nevermore series, which is a fantasy middle grade series. 
And in that series, there are people called witnesses. And witnesses are able to see things that are not visible. So like, for instance, they can see bonds between people or bonds between um, objects and people. So if you have like a very special teddy bear, a witness would be able to see the, the literal thread of, of that connects you to it, like a bond. So if witnesses existed, <laughs> a, wit a witness would be able to see a physical bond between me and this deck. This is how I feel about this deck. And um, as I said, I'm not being obnoxious on purpose. <laughs> I just truly, honestly, the first deck that came to mind when I thought of a confronting deck was this one. And the first deck that came to mind when I thought of a comforting deck was this one. Um, so I just, I just had to, I just had to, I, I truly could not, I mean, I could think of other comforting decks, but they were oracles and I didn't want to show more oracles. Um, if you want to know which one came to mind first was the Into the Lonely Woods Oracle, which is actually an oracle that I pair all the time with this one, but generally these were the two <laughs> decks that came to mind with this category. So most confronting deck is the John Bauer and most comforting deck is the John Bauer. Then we have the every day versus the every so often. And I, I don't have like a true everyday deck, like the one everyday deck. Uh, every time I see people talk about their everyday decks or like their workhorse decks, I am kind of jealous because I wish I had one and I do have like workhorse in the sense of I can pick them up and I know I'm going to get a good reading but I don't have like a true everyday deck because I honestly switch around so much but I am going to answer with the deck that lately I have been using almost every day and that is my Da Vinci Enigma. This is the deck that most gets me. It just speaks my language in a way that we get each other. It just, it gets me. Um, it, it, I always know what it means. I, um, I, I just, yeah, it's, there's a reason why I've been using it every day. It just works for anything and I, yeah. Da Vinci Enigma Tarot. And then the every so often is the mystical moments. And I think this is the one deck purchase that I'm like, should I have bought this deck? I'm not sure. I never feel called to use it, but um, I have friends who love it. And so I have used it, but I never use it to read for myself. I use it to read for my friends because my friends absolutely love this deck, but I am not super comfortable with it. I love the imagery. And if you saw my favorite major stack, I have a lot of favorites in this but I love it as art, but I don't know if I connect to it as a deck. And yeah, I just, my, my friends really like it. <laughs> and so, as I said, I have used it because uh, my friends like me to use it, but um, I never pull it for myself. So this is my everyday deck and my every so often, the Da Vinci Enigma and the um, Mystical Moments. I think I haven't been flipping through more of these, like doing the side by side comparison, have I? I don't know. Oh, I like this look, the night, the, I mean, it's not uh, the night in terms of the card, but it's a night 
or a, a person riding a horse and a person riding a hummingbird. I really like that. Um, oh, look at this one, even better. Like, it looks like a hummingbird and, um, yeah. And then we have another, another. These cats are very into movement at the moment. And look, look, now this one is pointing. <laughs> uh, okay, I'm loving this. Uh, maybe, maybe I can play with these two. Because, look, they want to talk to each other. <laughs> so, um, yes, um, the everyday deck and every so often. Finally, we have light work and shadow work. And as many people have said, I don't actually have a practice where I'm like, I'm going to do light work or I'm going to do shadow work. And, um, okay, so the way I understand light and shadow work is, shadow work are things that are hidden in the depths, like things that are maybe in the subconscious, things that you are not aware of. And light work would be things that you are aware of, like things that are on the surface. And so um, by that definition, most of the work I do in tarot is shadow work because I don't know why I would ask the cards something that is in the surface because for me, the cards help me dig deeper. Um, and so I'm like, why? What, like I don't need cards to to see what's in the surface, but the way I I, I um the way I took it is practical questions. So practical questions that are like um oh um what approach do you suggest me to take in this job interview, for instance, or um oh I'm going to go on a date like um, what advice do you have you know like practical questions things that are like you know you know the answer and the cards show you the answer that you're like yeah I knew I knew I know I'm sorry I'm sorry I'm not doing this like that type of answer and then shadow work is like deeper uh, deeper stuff like the kind of thing where you have one question and then the tarot answers with another thing, like something you were not expecting th from that question, that kind of work. And for the light work, by that definition, I chose the wise dog tarot because it's very good for practical, practical readings. Um, it, I've also done it for like more emotional, deeper stuff, and it also works really well. This is a deck that you can use for anything, but mainly I come to it with practical, practical questions, practical advice, and the doggies just, um, give really good advice. And then for the shadow work deck, and let me just say, I hate that I chose such a cliche shadow work deck because I don't think that shadow work decks have to be dark in color. They don't have to be black. And I hate that I chose such a stereotypical, the hipster in me hates to have chosen such a stereotypical deck. And just to give you an example, the John Bauer is a great shadow work deck, right? And that's not black. But as I said, I didn't want to repeat decks in the tag. And so um, I chose, uh, I have a reason for choosing this very cliche deck. Uh, and this is the Heaven and Earth Tarot. And um, I don't know if I have been off center the whole video. Never mind. Um, the reason I chose this deck is because I have like literal examples of every time I use this deck, it makes me realize things I didn't know. And I've also have had really good cries after using this deck. And I think more than the color, I think it's the mystic quality. It, it's like, it is very foggy, very misty. And so it's a very nostalgic feeling deck. And I think this is why um, it's so good for like digging deeper. And 
So I have um, specific examples that I'm not going to share specifically like what the reading I got because they are so personal. But specifically, um, the most poignant reading I've had in terms of shadow work was um, with the Three of Wands from this deck. The Three of Wands showed up in a reading and it meant something and um, it's so personal that I'm not going to share it, but it totally shadow work, meaning that it was something I hadn't realized. And when I got it, I was like, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> um, and, and that has happened on several instances. Um, I also got one time the Empress and one time with the Queen of Wands. Um, but yeah, every time I use this deck, things come up that I wasn't aware of, which is why I chose it as the... Um, the shadow, shadow work shadow work deck and as i said the doggies are very like practical advice like you know this um why why aren't you listening to yourself type of thing so oh look swords swords so yeah this is my tag i hope you liked it i have uh, several tags um lined up um, that I want to be filming in the next couple of days, weeks, I don't know. Um, but yeah, so I want to do the All About Tarot. I want to do the uh, top, top 10 Curiosity decks. I have a haul that I want to film. And um, so, you know, I'll be uploading more. I don't know when, uh, slowly. <laughs> But, um, yeah, so this was my tag. I hope you liked it and I will see you on another video. I don't know what else to say. I uh, see you. See you soonish.